All right, today we're diving into something that sounds like science fiction. We're talking about a potential breakthrough in AI hardware that could make it, get this, 90,000 times more efficient. Let's unpack what that even means. So we all know large language models are everywhere. I mean, they're completely changing the game in pretty much every industry you can think of. They're without a doubt one of the most powerful technologies we have today. But there's a massive catch, a really big one. To get these incredible models to work, you need a mind-blogging amount of power. And that means they have an absolutely ravenous appetite for energy. And that gets us to the core problem we need to tackle today. This isn't just a small issue, it's a hidden crisis that could seriously slow down the future of AI. So where is all that juice actually going? You might think it's the AI doing all its complex thinking, right? Well, the truth is a little less glamorous. It really all boils down to a massive traffic jam happening inside the computer chip. And this traffic jam has a name, the Great Memory Bottleneck. The main thing causing all the trouble is a piece of the puzzle called the KV cache. You can think of the KV cache as the AI's short-term memory. As it's writing something, it keeps track of the context, what it's already said in this cache. But here's the problem. This cache gets huge. So big, in fact, that it can't fit in the super-fast memory that's right next to the processor. Okay, here's a great way to think about it. A GPU is like a world-class chef who can chop things up at unbelievable speeds. But their cutting board, that's the fast, on-ship memory, is tiny. And all the ingredients, that's our KV cache, are stored in a giant refrigerator on the other side of the kitchen. That's the slower, main memory. So, for every single new word the AI generates, our chef has to stop, run all the way to the fridge, grab one tiny ingredient, run all the way back, do one super fast chop, and then do it all over again, thousands and thousands of times. It's just constant frantic running. And here's the wildest part. The energy spent just moving the data around now costs more than the energy for the actual computation. It's unbelievably inefficient. So what if, what if you could just stop all that running? What if you could put the cutting board inside the refrigerator? Well, that's the beautifully simple idea behind a new approach called in-memory computing. So the old way is this constant energy-guzzling shuffle of data. But with in-memory computing, the computation, the chopping, happens right where the data lives. The ingredients never have to leave the fridge. The bottleneck is just gone. And the magic piece of technology that makes this possible is called a gain cell. It's this incredibly elegant little device. It uses stored electrical charge to hold a value, just like normal memory. But, and here's the genius part, it can also use that same charge to perform a multiplication, like a processor. It's a memory cell and a calculator all rolled into one. Let's actually look at the chip architecture here. You can see these sections labeled gain cell arrays. That's our memory, the refrigerator. And notice how they're physically fused right next to the computation blocks, like the part labeled ReLU. Everything is integrated together in these subtiles. By putting the work right next to the data, our chef basically never has to take a step. Okay, so. We solved the energy crisis, right? We're done? Well, not so fast. This new analog hardware is unbelievably efficient, but it's also imperfect. And that creates a whole new world of problems for the software. The researchers put it perfectly in their paper. This hardware has non-ideal characteristics. What that really means is it just doesn't behave like the clean, perfect, predictable digital world that AI models like GPT-2 were trained in. So you can't just take your existing AI software and expect it to run. It won't. It'll just fail. So let's break down these quirks. For starters, the chip uses slightly different math. It has tiny, unavoidable imperfections and electrical noise. And it works with numbers that are less precise. These aren't bugs. It's just the nature of this kind of analog hardware. But for a standard AI model, it's enough to cause total confusion. And this leads us to the really fascinating puzzle. How do you bridge that gap? How do you get the software to not just put up with the hardware's weird personality, but actually learn to work with it? What the researchers came up with is just brilliant. It's a four-step process. First, they train the AI on a perfect, simulated version of the chip. Then, they move it over to a simulation of the real, quirky hardware. And here's the secret sauce. They run a special algorithm that tweaks the model, step by step, basically teaching it how to account for all the hardware's little imperfections. A final quick polish, and it's good to go. And the results are just wow. This chart shows a metric called perplexity. You can think of it as a confusion score for the AI. Lower is way better. 
Before the fix, the model is totally lost, with a perplexity over 1700. It's just spitting out nonsense. But after their process, it plummets to just 21. That's not just an improvement, it's the difference between chaos and coherence. So now that the hardware and the software are best friends, let's get to the final payoff. What does all this work actually get you? This is where it gets really, really good. First, the headline number, energy savings. Compared to a top tier NVIDIA GPU, this new analog chip is up to 90,000 times more energy efficient. I'm going to say that again, 90,000x. It's an absolutely astronomical number. And it's not just about efficiency. It's also blazing fast. The latency, the delay before you get an answer, is slashed by up to 300 times compared to that same high-end GPU. But this, this right here, is the most important part. You'd think that getting these insane gains in speed and efficiency would mean the AI has to get dumber, right? Some kind of trade-off? Well, look at the data. On standard AI reasoning tests, the performance of the new system is virtually identical to the original GPT-2. It's all the game, with almost no pain. So we have to end on this thought. By tackling AI's enormous energy and cost problem without making the AI itself less capable, could this be the kind of technology that finally democratizes AI? Is this the breakthrough that puts truly powerful intelligence in everyone's hands, sustainably and affordably? It's a pretty powerful idea. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.